Hello, welcome to the Thursday, October 29th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Back in March, Microsoft published a patch for the SMB Ghost vulnerability CVE 2020-0796. And this vulnerability has rightfully so gotten quite a bit of attention because its CVSS score was 10, basically allowing a full remote compromise without any logging in or any user interaction. So it's as bad as it goes. Jan today reminds us that there is still a lot of vulnerable systems that are still connected to the internet. About 8% of all IP addresses that have port 445 exposed to the internet are vulnerable to uh, the SMB ghost uh, vulnerability. And well, of course, we can just guess what it looks like internal uh, to networks, so in not publicly exposed IP addresses, but I would expect this to be even worse. The real problem here is that we have about 8% of hosts that are unmaintained, unpatched, and probably vulnerable to a lot more than SMB Ghost, but it's actually a little bit uh, one of the more difficult to exploit vulnerabilities. And while uh, the individual owners of these machines may not really care about these machines, if they're sort of forgotten and don't hold any important data, uh, these machines also put the in a large somewhat at risk in that they could easily be then abused as an attack platform. And if you use Microsoft Defender ATP, I hope you put down your coffee first this morning before you actually looked at your alerts because you may have seen a lot of alerts warning you that Cobalt Strike was being used on your network. Cobalt Strike is a penetration testing tool, but also often used by attackers in order to set up a command control channel and uh, such it is an important thing to detect in your uh, network. But apparently what Microsoft Defender ATP did was that it flagged all connections to localhost 127001 as Cobalt Strike traffic. Luckily, Microsoft was able to flag these all as false positives. So if you got to work a little bit later, you may no longer have seen those. If you do see Cobalt Strike today on Thursday, then better pay attention and double check the system. And QNAP released an advisory regarding two command injection vulnerabilities that were fixed in its network storage devices. Now, we had lately uh, quite a few of updates uh, from QNAP fixing various vulnerabilities. Just want to point out again that uh, if you hear about a lot of bulletins like this from a vendor, doesn't mean that other vendors have better security. They may just not patch these vulnerabilities. So I don't really want to hold it against any company that they're actually patching it. Not a lot of detail about this vulnerability. That's sort of a little bit of downside here. So it's not clear if, for example, this vulnerability requires authentication for execution or not. Patching requires a complete firmware update, so it is not one of those vulnerabilities where you just have to update a particular app within the QNAP control panel. And TrickBot, of course, wasn't the news the last few weeks for efforts of the US Cyber Command, Microsoft and others to take down that botnet. And while it had some partial successes, NetScout is now reporting that TrickBot is extending its reach to Linux and infecting more Linux systems now. Also, the command control protocol was somewhat revised in order to address some of the issues that had been exploited as part of the takedown. Overall, you need to continue to watch out for TrickBot and don't be surprised if you have a Linux system that got infected with it. Another problem, of course, with TrickBot is that it's really more a delivery mechanism. So uh, what you end up with is uh, then some kind of malware that it decided to deploy via the initial TrickBot infection. 
And abuse.ch did publish a blog post asking for help. Uh, They're having kind of problems keeping their system up and running. Well, it's really only uh, one person that does all of this. So if you are using any of uh, their services, uh, you may want to take a look at the blog post. They're also looking for some kind of uh, research sponsorship. Personally, I really like uh, their recent uh, Malware Bazaar. I think it's one of the few sort of Malware exchange services that was really uh, done right. But most uh, people probably know abuse.ch from the various Malware tracker lists that they publish. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.